because it annihilates. So when two dark matter particles hit each other, they turn into something else. These dark stars start out when they first form, being about as massive as the sun. They keep accreting and growing and growing until they can get a million times as massive as the sun and a billion times as bright. Could there really be stars out there that are powered by dark matter instead of nuclear fusion? Sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. But what if I told you that the James Webb Space Telescope might have found evidence for these mysterious objects known as dark stars? Stick around and we'll dive deep into how these discoveries could revolutionize our understanding of the universe. Trust me, you won't want to miss this cosmic mystery. Whoa, 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 hold up. Did someone say dark stars are powered by dark matter? Are we in a Marvel movie or something? <laughs> Let's start with the basics. What exactly is a dark star? No, it's not another name for a black hole, though that's a good guess. The term dark star actually dates back to 1783, when John Michel first used it to describe an object so massive that even light couldn't escape its gravity, what we now call a black hole. But today, a dark star refers to something entirely different. Dark stars are made almost entirely of hydrogen and helium, 99.99%. Okay. And it's a little bit Which of dark regular, matter. Like all stars. Right, like yeah. all stars of that. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a, But well, no, it's only hydrogen and helium from the Big Bang because these mm -hmm. are the first stars that ever formed. Got it. So they don't have anything else in there. No carbon, mm -hmm. nitrogen. As physicist Catherine Fries and her team proposed in 2007, it is a theoretical type of star that could have existed in the early universe. Okay. The dark stars would have been the first stars to form in the history of the universe when it was 200 million years old and we're now at 14 billion years. But wait, we're talking about dark matter, which by its very name doesn't emit light. How could it possibly fuel a star? Well, it's all about a process called dark matter annihilation. Instead of being powered by nuclear fusion like our sun, these stars might be fueled by the annihilation of dark matter particles. When two dark matter particles collide, they annihilate each other, releasing energy. Imagine these dark stars as cosmic fireworks fueled by a mysterious, invisible substance. But wait, there's more. Before we reveal to you what JWST discovered, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell to stay updated on all things space. Since its launch in 2021, the JWST has been turning heads with its groundbreaking discoveries, helping us peer back to the dawn of the universe. One of its most intriguing finds, the potential detection of dark stars. Fast forward to 2023, and among these observations, a team of astronomers, including Catherine Fries, found something that made their jaws drop. Three objects that might be these supermassive dark stars. These objects, identified as Jade's GSZ-130, Jade's GSZ-120, and Jade's GSZ-110, are some of the oldest and most distant objects ever observed, dating back to between 320 and 420 million years after the Big Bang. But here's the important part kicker. Their brightness and size don't quite match what we'd expect from regular stars or galaxies. Could these be the dark stars we've theorized about for over a decade? Before you start planning your trip to visit these stars, there's a catch. The evidence is compelling, but it's not yet definitive. The researchers noted that these objects' brightness and size matched the predicted properties of dark stars. But of course, a hypothesis is just the beginning of science. They can't definitively prove these are dark stars yet. However, these findings are an exciting step toward unlocking one of the universe's biggest mysteries. Before we get too deep, let's talk about the crazy science behind dark matter stars. 
Well, there's a lot of dark matter at the center of our galaxy, at the center yeah. of the proto-galaxy. Okay. The fact that you're smack in the middle is what counts. Got it. Because that's mm -hmm. where you got a lot of dark matter. Got it. And when you got a lot of dark matter, you get a lot of dark matter annihilation. The, the way stars are moving around the center of the galaxy, they would get flung out of the galaxy if it weren't for the dark matter providing the gravitational right. pull to keep them in. For example, J. Dyer ST has been finding these overmassive galaxies that don't quite fit into our current understanding of how galaxies form and evolve. Dark stars might be the missing link. Dark matter, by the way, is that mysterious stuff that doesn't interact with light, but does interact with gravity, so we know it's there even though we can't see it. Scientists believe it makes up about 85% of the matter in the universe. Wild, huh? But here's something wild you have to see. A baby toucan. In astrophysics, skepticism is healthy, and eyebrows were raised when a paper by Illy, Paulin, and Fries claimed to have found candidates for supermassive dark stars in JWST data. At first glance, the idea sounded like pure science fiction, but the paper was published in a reputable journal. So how did they come to this conclusion? The researchers used imaging data from JWST to identify these potential dark stars. Typically, astronomers rely on spectra, the fingerprints of light that tell us what something is made of and how far away it is. However, in this case, the researchers focused on the imaging data. Why? Possibly because the spectroscopic data wasn't available yet, or maybe they planned to analyze it later. The team compared the DJWST imaging data to their model spectrum for a supermassive dark star and found that the data matched up surprisingly well. This suggests that these objects might not be galaxies as initially thought, but could be dark stars instead. And that's huge! So we predicted what the spectrum should be. So how much light at different frequencies would be coming out of these objects. And it, they're only made of hydrogen and helium, so you better not see signs of any other element in there. Mm -hmm. So when the James Webb turned on, we were ready to compare the, the, the early universe objects that they're seeing to our dark star predictions. Now, one dark star is as, can be as, as bright as an entire early galaxy of stars. And so telling the difference, well, you, you, there aren't very many spectra yet. But at the time, we did this a year ago, there were five objects with spectra that we could get our hands on, and three of them were dead on, perfect matches to dark stars. But why is this such a big deal? Beyond discovering a new type of star, supermassive dark stars could have been responsible for reionizing the universe. The process made the universe transparent. It allowed light to travel freely after the first 150 million years of darkness. Wait, what? Reionizing the universe? Yep, you heard that right. Reionization occurred when the first stars and galaxies formed and their radiation ionized the neutral hydrogen that filled the universe. This allowed light to travel freely, making the universe transparent. Population three stars the first generation of stars made up of pure hydrogen and helium are the leading candidates for reionizing the universe. But here's the twist. If these dark stars existed, they might have played a crucial role in this process. They would be incredibly bright and massive, potentially outshining entire galaxies. Imagine that. A single star, millions of times the mass of our sun, lighting up the universe. Did you know the world's largest cockroach is called Megaloblata longipennis? Yeah, I know, that name alone is terrifying. But this monster is roaming free in Central and South America, casually holding the record for the biggest wingspan of any roach, up to 8 inches or 20 centimeters. And if that doesn't already make your skin crawl, its body can grow up to 4 inches, around 10 centimeters. Now just imagine that thing flying straight at you, that would be a nightmare. As thrilling as these discoveries are, we're still in the early stages of understanding dark stars. 
there are significant challenges in confirming their existence. For one, we need more detailed observations to get a complete picture of these objects' light output. This will help determine if they have the expected pure hydrogen and helium compositions, a telltale sign of a dark star. One potential way to confirm the presence of dark stars is to look for a specific absorption line in their spectra, indicating the presence of helium-2. This would be like finding a smoking gun, because it's not something we'd expect in regular galaxies. Another approach is to wait for magnified observations of these objects through gravitational lensing. This phenomenon occurs when a massive object, like a galaxy or cluster of galaxies, bends the light from a more distant object, magnifying it. Consider gravitational lensing as the universe's version of a zoom and enhance feature. And if we could get a magnified view of these dark star candidates, we might see if they're just single points of light, supermassive dark stars, or if they're galaxies. If these objects turn out to be dark stars, it would be a game changer for our understanding of dark matter and the early universe. It's like the universe's history had a secret chapter that we've been missing out on. Dark stars could help explain why we're seeing so many ancient, bright galaxies. They might provide an alternative to the standard cosmological model, fitting perfectly with what WST is revealing. Discovering these dark stars would offer crucial clues about dark matter, possibly supporting the existence of WIMPs or weakly interacting massive particles. And speaking of WIMPs, why don't WIMPs ever get invited to parties? Because they're always acting a bit too weakly around others. <laughs> Here's a question. Do you think these dark stars could help explain how supermassive black holes formed so early in the universe? Tell us in the comments below. It's an irresistible idea. We know that supermassive black holes exist at the centers of most galaxies, but how they got there is still a big question mark. If dark stars were around in the early universe, they might have been the seeds for these colossal black holes. We've covered a lot of ground today, from the mind-bending idea of dark stars to the ground-breaking observations of JWST. Whether or not these discoveries hold up to scrutiny, one thing's for sure, the universe is far more mysterious and wondrous than we could ever imagine. And if you think dark stars are mind-blowing, just imagine what it would be like if there was a black hole inside our sun. Crazy, right? Click right here if you want to know more about black holes.